Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to lesson number 14, where we will be continuing our talk on the different types of relationships. Of course, this one is going to be about the many-to-many -many relationship, so let's dive right into it. So here's what you'll learn today. In this lesson, we're going to be talking, of course, about real-world examples of the many-many-many-to-many -many relationships, uh, what a many-to-many -many relationship looks like in a database, hint, it's a little bit different from the other schemas you've already seen, so pay attention. And also how to identify the parent and child tables in this many-to-many -many relationship. So, a many-to-many -many relationship is less common than the one-to-many, but obviously still useful to learn. Um, definitely, I've used many, all three of these relationships I've used throughout all of my uh, programming days. So, every single one is important to understand and to know. Um, but examples of the, uh, again, this should say many-to-many. -many. I need to update my slides, apparently. Um, the examples of the many-to-many uh, -many relationship could be um, author to book. So many authors can publish many books, and many books can be pub published by many authors. Uh, student to class, same idea. Actors to movies, same idea there. Okay, All of them have uh, big spaghetti-like cross-references to each other, or at least could have many spaghetti-like cross-references to each other. Uh, the key thing to note here is obviously how this relationship functions. So think about it this way. One author could publish many books, and any one of those books could be written by any number of authors. It's called a many-to-many -many relationship because there are no limits to the number of relationships that can be formed between these two tables. Okay, so how do we go about creating this many-to-many -many relationship in a database setting? Well, obviously the first step is to identify the two tables involved in this particular relationship. In our example, let's use the author to book relationship because that is one that is very common with uh, respect to teaching the many-to-many -many, uh, database schema. And uh, so here's what our author and book tables could look like. So we have an author table, an author table with author ID and author name. And we have a book table with a book ID and a book name. Now, one uh, important thing to notice about our tables here is that there's no link between them just yet. Okay, this is because the many-to-many -many relationship is unique and it requires something called a join table. A join table is another table which holds the primary keys of the two related tables. Okay, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just a second. So there's actually a third table that we're going to create that holds the primary keys of both the author and the book tables. So this design, this database design, this schema is what allows us to create the many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Now we've created our join table and it's in the middle and we call it the author book. Okay, and now our relationship is alive. So what we've done here is we take the primary key of the author table and we stick it into the author book table, which is like I said, the join table. And we take the book ID of the book table and we slam it into the author book table as well. So you see the name of the join table is typically through uh, convention, uh, just the um, uh, concatenation of the two other tables, table names. Okay, so author over here, book over here, slam them together, author underscore book. Make sense? So it would just be table underscore or table A underscore table B would be the name of the join table. It, it's not critical that you name uh, the join table specifically according to this um, convention, but like you know, like I said, it is a convention, so it's sort of a suggested uh, thing that you should use when naming your join tables. So. Like I said, notice the primary keys, uh, the join table contains the primary keys from both table A and table B, which is author and book. And with this join table, we can insert any number of relationships between the author table and the book table. Okay, once again, it's helpful to identify the parent and child in the relationship. So typically the parent side of the relationship is able to exist all on its own. So the questions we would ask ourselves is, can an author exist without a book? Or can a book exist without an author? So unfortunately, with this particular example, the choice here is a bit of a gray area. Because, um, you know, think about it. Can an author exist without a book? Well, if you have never created a book before, could you call yourself an author? I don't really think so. So that doesn't really make sense there. But can a book exist without an author? 
Well, potentially, you can have a book that's been created or written by someone who doesn't wish to be named, so it can be an unknown type of person, um, or someone under a pen name or something like that. So then there's no real concrete way to tie it back to an actual author. So like I said, this is a bit of a gray area, but you can usually assign a parent and a child based on the requirements for the program that the database is going to be used for. So think about whatever application it is that, that you're designing or that you're using um, or what that you're working on, whatever the case may be. Think about that program and how this these tables, how this relationship should be applied as it pertains to that program. So for example, I say perhaps in our system an author can uh, can exist without a book as they can be in the process of writing a book, okay, which has not yet been finished. So if you're in the process of writing a book, you'd probably say right in the book that, you know, you know, this is the author was or written by and you put your name. So maybe it's in the, you're in the process of writing it. Okay. And also perhaps our system has a requirement that no book can exist without a specific author. So the case that I just talked about, maybe the, you're not allowed to have a book that's published by um, uh, some unknown person or some pen name or something. Maybe that's just um, a requirement for the particular system that we are creating. Okay. So with these requirements uh, in mind, the author would be the parent and the book would be the child because we would apply the same logic as we did in the one-to-one -one relationship um, where you think about, you know, what is it that can exist without the other? So given the, the rules that I've just outlined, um, an author can exist without a book, but a book cannot exist without an author. Therefore, we're saying that the author is the parent and the book is the child. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the, the extent of the the many-to-many -many relationship. But before I sum everything up, let me go back really quickly here and talk a little bit about an actual example. So, um, you know, you might not fully be able to picture how this relationship actually works. But let's say we have an author ID um, of number one, and we have the author name, let's say we use me again, Trevor Page. And then we have a book ID, uh, let's say book ID number one as well. And the book name is, well, for example, let's use the real world, How to Program with Java. I published a book called How to Program with Java. Um, so, fair enough. But let's say I also co-authored the book with another person. Let's say John Doe. So let's insert John Doe as an author ID, or author ID two, and John Doe is the author name. So now what happens is we've got two authors and we've got one book. And we want to say that these two authors were authors of that one book. How would we do that? Well, this is where we would put in to uh, this author book join table. This is where we put in our data. So the author ID, like I said, we have two authors, author ID one and two, and we have one book. So we can insert two rows into this table uh, that would look like this. We'd have author ID one, book ID one. Okay, that would be a row in this table. We also have author ID two, book ID one. Okay, so that means author IDs one and two are the authors of book ID one. Now, to throw yet another curveball, let's say there's another book. So let's say book ID two, and let's say the book is called How to Play Guitar. But John or uh, John Doe, is that what we call them? Yeah, John Doe is the second author. But let's say he published that second book. So now we could put in, so now we have, uh, you know, John Doe, who is author ID 2. We have the how to learn how to play guitar book, which is book ID 2. So then we could put that into the author book uh, table as well. We could put author ID 2 and book ID 2. Okay, so now we have three different rows in our author book, where the first two rows identify a relationship between Trevor Page and John Doe, who published How to Program with Java. But then we have a third row in the author book table, which outlines John Doe, who authored the book uh, How to Play Guitar. Okay, so you can see how you can sort of have this spaghetti effect where you have a bunch of different authors who could potentially be authors of a bunch of different books and those books could be authored by a bunch of other people as well and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can have all these different relationships back and forth because it's a many to many relationship. Cool. So now that we've covered some real world examples, uh, those real, real world examples could be, like I said, author to book, uh, student to class, because think about it, you can have a... Um, a bunch of students enrolled in a class, 
But uh, you can also have a class that holds other students as well. And you can have like these, because um, think about it, you can have, let's say, uh, a math class and a physics class, okay? And the physics class could hold references to a few of the students, like let's say students, I don't know, 1 through 10. And then the uh, math class could have, um, you know, students 11 through 20. But then let's say there's some cross-referencing going on there. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, this, you know, student three of the one to ten is also taking another class who's taking you know um you know what astronomy or something like that and and so on and so forth you can have all these sort of cross-referencing spaghetti-like situations um in the many-to-many -many situation as well as actor to movie right bunch of actors can be in a specific movie but you know it's, it works back and forth like that it's really 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 cool stuff when you're dealing with the many-to-many -many situations so obviously we also looked at what the many-to-many -many relationship looks like in a database you can have a separate join table which is a third table which is created which houses the primary keys of the two related tables right just like we saw over here author id book id this is the join table it houses the primary keys of the other tables the tables where we're establishing the relationship right and we learned how to identify the parent and child tables in a many many to many relationship uh, because the parent is a table that can exist without the child and the child is a table that cannot exist without the parent exactly the same as the one to one relationship with how to determine uh, which one the parent is and which one the child is and if you remember there's also the one to many relationship and that one's actually easy because the one side is always the parent and the many side is always the child in that relationship all right Whew. so there you go now you've uh, you've you've seen all the examples of the three different kinds of relationships the one-to-one -one, the one-to-many and the many-to-many -many. if you need to you can go back and obviously re-watch these lessons to get an idea of the differences between them and the differences in their schema and uh, and all that good stuff um, and and that's great so beautiful stuff then we can move on to yet another wonderful topic in our uh, databases and SQL course so I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson bye for now